Welcome back. Today, I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean to an electric vehicle. On today's episode, I'm going to be building custom motor mounts and installing the electric motor and transmission into the DeLorean. To catch you up quickly, we're taking the entire drivetrain out of a Chevy Bolt, the electric motor, the inverter, the charger, the batteries, the electronics, everything, and putting them in the DeLorean. This is Project Lightning. I am test fitting the electric motor in the DeLorean for the first time. Um, and it's going to fit. Uh, I've got plenty of space here. So let me show you. I mean, it's just so cute. <laughs> Such a tiny little motor. Um, it's going to come up about an inch. So here's the, uh, the oil pan, the bottom of the oil pan. And so that has to come up about maybe an inch and a half from where it is now. Um, this is about the closest spot. So this is the oil pump for the uh, transaxle uh, motor and yeah it's it's pretty close here i've got maybe you know a, a quarter or half inch gap or something um so i i wish that was more um it will be a little bit more when i raise it up uh, about an you know an inch uh, but it won't be a lot more so i wish i could move that because that's by far the closest thing um all the way around lots of space oh by the way this mount here uh is not going to be here so this is the mount from the bolt along with uh, shine some light so this mount right there is also from the bolt and that is not going to stay there uh, but i used it to hold the jack stands um, and actually right now when i try to lift it up to get that extra inch and a half i'm hitting on that mount right there you can see all the way around plenty of space that is the motor can uh sorry the gear selector uh, motor there and it is not going to hit. There's uh, a good amount of space, but you know, next to that bracket there. Um, that's actually my fuel line. That's going to be gone. <laughs> and the other bracket here, which is going to be removed. And so, yeah, I have a ton of room. I will be able to move um, the whole electric motor up an inch and a half. And then if I can move it back any, I, I might do it, but you know what I measured. So I measured uh, from here and I wanted to see how far away uh, from this spot that is. And as it is right now, I'm within uh, like half an inch or so of where it was stock. So this is pretty much where it's gonna be, um, you know, give or take an inch or so in, in any direction. Uh, but yeah, so I'm super happy with that. You can see, so I'm looking straight down here, um, especially once you remove, once I remove this bracket here, there's just like so much room. So the battery box is gonna go right here in this area uh, and I'll have plenty of room for it. I'm now removing the stock motor mounts from the Volt's drive unit. This weighs about 175 pounds and contains the electric motor, single speed transmission and a differential all in one. It almost feels like the drive unit was made to go in the DeLorean. It's a bit wider than the stock transmission, but much shorter and weighs about the same amount. You can see here that the mount points on the drive unit are pretty close to the frame rails, and since that is how the original transmission is mounted, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using an off-the-shelf LS engine swap motor mount kit. I mounted it up to the frame of the DeLorean, and after test fitting and confirming it was symmetrical, I drilled three holes in either side and attached the mount. Then I mocked up a mounting plate that attaches to the drive unit using cardboard. Then I cut the cardboard to fit as I raised the motor into position. I've got the motor mounts mocked up. Just using cardboard here, just to give myself you know, a general idea how things are gonna fit. Once I was happy with the cardboard mock-ups, I fabricated the mount out of one quarter inch thick mild steel plate. This was cut with an angle grinder and a jigsaw. 
After a lot of back and forth and small adjustments, the plates were then bolted to the motor, three bolts on each side using the original mount locations. Once the plate was fit properly, I cut the metal tabs from the kit down to size with the electric motor in the right spot and then double checked all of my measurements. All right, let me show you how I'm getting this electric motor mounted in the DeLorean uh, and positioned correctly. And I'm using some very, very basic tools here to do this. So the first one is uh, a very cheap <laughs> little level. And um, if I put it in this area here, it is pretty much right on. And I can do the same thing up here. And it is also right on. And so this lets me know that the motor is not tilted incorrectly this way. So that was one of the first things I did was make sure that it was level. Uh, then I also measure it forward and back, which is also right on. Uh, and I do that by having another jack in the front. Sorry, you can't see it from here. Uh, but that little jack it lets me raise and lower the front to make sure that that is level. And so it is. Uh, the other thing I do is I have, uh, this is just a, a cheap transparent ruler. And if I put it on the bottom of the frame here, this is supposed to be the bottom most part of the frame. And so I can run this over here and it just barely clears or maybe kind of touches the bottom of the electric motors little cooling plate right there. And so I can do that here and I can do this here and make sure that it, it is exactly the same there. Uh, so that also helps me make sure that it is level. Uh, the next thing I can do, which just happens to work out for this particular a combo um, of electric motor and you know this uh, this frame here. But if I push on it, so these these here um, uh, are the CV output shafts. There's one on this side and then the other, which is under here that you can't see from that angle. But I can take this and and put it out at the very front and then look over and there's actually a bolt that just happens to align on either side. And so I can use this and check the left side and check the right side and make sure that that bolt, um, that, that the ruler is, is properly centered in between um, those two points. So that makes sure that the motor is centered this way. Uh, the front and back, I actually have a lot of wiggle room there. Basically, as soon as, as long as I can get the motor here, um, I, I don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm too far, I'm an inch forward or something like that. There's just not much, so long as I have clearance. Um, which brings me to the next point here, which is clearance. Uh, for clearance, I again have a smaller little translucent ruler. Um, and what I can do is I just measured this spot in here and I wanted to see, you know, how much room I actually have. And so in here, I've got a little bit over, this one's a centimeter and a half uh, or so. Basically, I can get my pinky uh, to slide through this point. And then there's also another one back here and I can get my pinky just to slide through back there. So those are the, the only two places that even come close to anywhere. Uh, everywhere else, like I've got, you know, I can stick my full hand in between any other spots here. So tons of room everywhere else. This uh, little oil pump, a little bit close. And then there's a uh, connector piece at the top and that's a little bit close. Um, I have contingencies <laughs> if the motor does tend to move around more than I expect on the motor mounts here, uh, but I'm not expecting them to. Another thing I do um, is that I made a bit of a poor man's plumb bob. This is, <laughs> this is literally just uh, one of the lug nuts and put a little wire on it. <laughs> and now I have a little makeshift plumb bob. If you have an actual plumb bob, go ahead and use that. I've, I've got one somewhere, but I just had this sitting right next to me. And I put this around the output shaft. And then I, again, measure from, you know, an, a known spot on the frame and then make sure that it is even. So this happens to be, it's, it's three and a half inches, but this is not right up to the edge. So it's, let's say it's, you know, uh, five eighths or something like that. So um, I do it on this side and then do the similar thing on the other side and make sure that they are identical. And of course um, they, they are, I've done that already. Um, and so that got me to a point where I was very comfortable saying this motor is in the right spot. <laughs> and once I had that, then I started working on the mounts. So the mounts, um, 
Let me zoom in over here. Um, the motor mount actually came with these, uh, these little brackets here. So all I had to do was cut them down to size. Uh, and then of course, grind them a little bit, test fit, grind a little bit more, test fit, and then put that here. So um, yeah, so this is now uh, in the right spot. I have the, uh, the bolts through there and I've got them on both sides. So at this point, I am ready to weld them into place. I'm using a flux core welder to tack weld the tabs to the plates that are attached to the motor. It's easier to use flux core or a MIG welder when crawling under the car like this. Once the tacks are in place, I can raise the car up and unbolt the brackets from the motor and then properly weld them up. Flux core is a very dirty welding process, and I used a TIG welder to finalize everything. I've never TIG welded before. This is literally the first time I've tried it. The welds did not turn out like stacks of dimes, but I tested the brackets by standing on them, and they didn't bend, so that's good enough for me. The brackets then go back on the motor, and the car is lowered down. This is the electric motor actually mounted for the first time in the DeLorean. So these are my custom little motor mounts here. They're all nicely welded up. And on this side here, similar thing. This is the part of the video where you are very impressed that I did this and it worked out perfectly on the first try. And now, let me admit to you that I totally messed this up, more than once. After getting the motor all mounted, I rechecked that it was centered and level and everything, and I found that the motor had about one half inch of yaw and a quarter inch of roll. This happened because I dropped one of the mounts and the tack welds broke. And when I redid it, I thought, well, the other side is good, so it wouldn't align unless it was right, and I was wrong. Fixing this after I had fully welded it together took me like two days, and if I was smart, I would have just cut the tabs off and started over, but I'm stubborn. I fixed this by using a die grinder to oval out the bolt holes in the plate and slowly working it over until it was within about a sixteenth of an inch. It was only then that I found out I was about an eighth of an inch shifted to the driver's side, but that's close enough for me. Once the two side mounts were complete, I started work on the third mount. This mount prevents the motor from rotating under heavy acceleration or braking. Just like the other mounts, I mocked this one up with cardboard, cut it out of quarter inch plate, and then tacked it together with the flux core welder. Now comes some footage you've all been waiting for, watching someone who doesn't know how to weld do it very poorly. I've only had a few hours of experience welding at this point, so I'm doing my best, 
but please feel free to leave a comment insulting my abilities. Because the YouTube algorithm only cares about engagement, not enjoyment. In fact, you should probably hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified the next time I drop a welding video so you can be the first to comment. The mount locations on the motor were not all in the same plane, so I stacked up little pieces of plate in order to make up the difference, about one inch in this case. I tacked them into place when fitting them, then drilled a hole all the way through, and now I'm welding them permanently together. I'm also going to take a cutoff wheel to them to try and even them out, but I really should have done that from the start. All three of the motor mounts then got a shot of black spray paint to keep them from rusting. And here is a nice overview of the completed mounts. And there you have it, the electric motor is installed in the DeLorean. If this seems like a fun project, you won't want to miss out on the next episode. So please show me that you're interested and give me your support by subscribing. This is Project Lightning.